So my name is Jeff Crosby and I live in Lynn. I've been here about 15, 20 years. I worked at General Electric for 33 years prior to that. And I was a machinist, I was a grinder, and was also eventually president of the union for about 20 years. My father was Harry Crosby. He's currently one of the four major characters in the Apple TV Plus series called Masters of the Air. And he was a kid from Oskaloosa, Iowa, who went to the University of Iowa. And when the war broke out in 1941, he volunteered for the Army Air Corps. And he wanted to be a pilot. That didn't work because he got sick every time he went up. So he became a navigator as a 23-year-old kid, uh, went over to England in 1943, he deployed, and he served for 32 missions, and he eventually became the lead navigator of the 100th Bomb Group. So at 23 years old, he was in charge of assembling 2,000 planes over the channel, which would allow them to defend themselves from the Luftwaffe, and then leading them over targets in England. And he was also my father, and that's kind of the, surreal part is seeing my dad on television played by an actor and realizing that millions of people are going to see him and that will be what they know about him. This was a show, so I don't think we ever expected it to be exactly um, the way my dad might have been. On the other hand, by the time they were done, they might have known my dad better at age 23 than I did. You know, I wasn't around. I wasn't born until he was 30 after the war. My sister, Rebecca Hutchinson, when the producers got in touch with us, she was a family member who did a lot of the work to give them materials, actual letters from the war that my mom and dad wrote back and forth to each other during the war. She had navigator reports that my dad wrote about certain missions that were in his words. So she did a lot of work trying to help them get it right, and they seemed to pay respectfully a lot of attention to that. They built an Army Air Corps base, Thorpe Abbotts. They modeled it on the actual Air Force base, and it was so big, they had to build it in four different sections in different parts of England, in East Anglia, the part of England that the bombers flew from. They even did the rooms accurately that the actors ended up never performing in. They just wanted everything to be as real as possible. And we actually had a chance to go to England to look at the set, and we even saw the bunk with my father's name on it. Next to that were actual letters my sister had lent them that my mom wrote during the war. So they were sitting beside his bed. We saw the briefing room, which he had described to us as a kid, um, exactly what it was like to wake up at four in the morning, get taken into the briefing room. They show the navigators, pilots, and bombardiers where they're gonna go that day. And that was pretty striking. They paid a lot of attention to detail, I mean, down to the cigarette butts and the ashtrays. What moved me in particular was just how terrifying it was to be in the air. The air and the sea are unforgiving sites of battle. Understanding just how fragile those planes were and how much fire they came under was really stunning and pretty terrifying to watch. So thinking about my dad trying to calmly navigate a ship, leading dozens or even hundreds of planes to try to get where they're supposed to go, that was very powerful. So just watching that brought it a lot closer to me, how terrifying that must have been for him and for all of those Army Air Force soldiers in a way that I had never really fully appreciated, I don't think before, just reading about it. We wanted to do an event here where there were a lot of people that my dad knew. So my brother Steve had a good friend who ran the Coolidge Cinema, which is a nonprofit cinema in Brookline. We had an event there and it was over 400 people. For me personally, a lot of people came from Lynn, maybe 100 people. And I really thought on a Friday night, who's gonna go down there? People are gonna be tired, they're not gonna wanna fight the traffic. But people came, it was like they were going to Hollywood. You know, they had a great time. There were people from my dad's church. There were people from Father Drynan's campaign for Congress in Newton. He was an anti-Vietnam War priest that they supported and helped manage his campaigns. All parts of his life, a lot of people from my own life, my siblings' lives, all came together to see this. I don't know, because he's not here to ask, how much of his experience in the war informed him. Did that shape his later views about the rights of immigrants, the rights of poor folks to have somewhere decent to live, you know, respect for work, fighting anti-Semitism, civil rights, those are all things that he, he believed in. In his civic life, he was really strong for affordable housing, 
that's one of the things I'm doing today is working on affordable housing, you know, in Lynn. And those are the things that motivate my life, even more probably than in his case. You know, that's kind of what I live for. That's what I believe in. So I, I assume those things from my mom and my dad influenced me. That's how we were brought up, all of us, to be highly organized and highly disciplined. And the notion was you're here for a purpose. You know, you should leave this world a little bit better than you found it. And I think that's something that was both implicit and explicit in their upbringing. I'm imagining that some of that came from the war and what they saw, what my mom went through as well, trying to survive at home and living with other Air Force wives, never knowing when they were going to get the word that their husbands were gone or had become POWs or were dead. So I think all those things, you know, I, I would guess uh, influenced them later and in turn influenced me. He was an English teacher after the war, so he was a communicator. He wrote a book, A Wing and a Prayer, about his experiences. So I think partly he was picked because he left a lot of uh, records. I think partly the 100th Bomb Group was legendary because of the heavy losses they took under certain missions. So I think he legitimately earned the stature of being a hero and a courageous guy during the war. And at the same time, and he always said this, he was just a kid going over there. And there's thousands of stories like that, you know, probably millions of stories like that. So one of the things that this has made me do is think that everybody should be talking to the elders. And he is somebody who did talk about the war a lot, um, but a lot of people didn't. And when I spoke to other children of other 100th Bond Group veterans, they said that reading my dad's book, because he was a communicator, he was a writer, he was a talker, but helped a lot of other veterans talk to their kids as well. So if it inspires people to appreciate the sacrifice that these young men made, and in many cases of their lives, to defeat fascism in the world, then I think that'll be a really worthy outcome of this entire series. To support Greater Lynn Senior Services and see more videos like these, please consider making a donation at the link below and subscribe to our channel.